Hi everyone, I'm back in my garage and today I'm going to be painting the wardrobe doors that I featured in last week's video. Now, to do that, a lot of you will have seen my MDF painting videos, but I could use my Johnson's MDF primer. So I don't even look after my tins like this, but this is nearly finished. So as I got to the end, I wasn't that bothered about letting it splash over the side. But I'm not going to use my Johnson's MDF, which I think is a really good product today. I'm going to use this Zinza BIN simply because everyone is so evangelical about it, how brilliant it is. Um, it's only a small tin, but it's runny stuff, so it'll go a long way. Let's get cracking. So in today's toolkit, we've got the Zinza BIN primer. We've got pure bristle paintbrush from Johnston's. We've got the simulated mohair roller sleeve, although you could use a foam roller sleeve. We've got the mini roller tray and roller itself. 180 grade sandpaper. Methylated spirits to clean the paintbrushes with. And Johnston's water-based satin top coat. Details of all the tools used in today's video will be in the description at the end of the video. Got my simulation mohair roller sleeve. Now, if any of you are thinking, oh, I'm not going to use a shellac paint because it seems like a real pain to wash the paint brush and methylated spirits, that's what I used to think. But seriously, this stuff is so good, it's worth the hassle of cleaning them with methylated spirits, and actually, it's surprisingly easy to do. All I do, I can take two or three jam jars like this. Put a tiny little splash of methylated spirits in each. I use the first jar to get the majority of the Zinza out of the paintbrush. And because it's such a thin paint, the, the paint just drops out of the bristles. And then you can clean it with an old rag. And you see here, the paint's almost completely gone already. So I've got three jam jars, I probably only need two. And then the second one, I just use again, just to get out the sort of the remainder of the paint. And that's pretty much good to go already. I will just use the third one as, as I've got it here. Now you can see by now there's almost no paint left in those bristles. And that whole process has taken about 45 seconds. So don't be put off by the fact you've got to use methylated spirits. The roller sleeves are a little bit more of a tricky proposition. As I'll be showing you later on in this video, I tend to use freezer bags to preserve these roller sleeves, which you can pretty much do for a week or so whilst you're applying various different coats. But when they're only a couple of quid a time, I basically throw them away when I'm done with them. Now, for the mouldings, I've used this pure bristle paintbrush that I bought from Johnston's Decorator Centre. Now, a lot of people think you should use synthetic paintbrushes when applying shellac paint. There's a link coming up on the screen now to my Zinza BIN Johnstone's MDF Primer comparison video, where over the weekend I had a great exchange with Mark Sutherland, who's given me lots of information. There's a real wealth of information, so you might want to check out that there. But he says you should use synthetic paintbrushes when applying shellac. Um, each to their own, but the only thing is in the official Zinza brochure, uh, link to which I will include in the description at the end of the video, they recommend using a pure bristle paintbrush, so that's what I have used in today's video. I've got to say guys, this is lovely to paint on. Because it's thin, obviously it goes a long way. You might remember from my last painting video that it's almost twice the price of the Johnstones, but it goes a lot further and it's just lovely to uh, work with because it's so thin, it just goes on so easily.
Notice I'm using a paintbrush for the mouldings and a roller for the longer sections. Most professional painters, a lot of who I meet on site on my day job, scoff at using rollers. They think that to get a truly professional finish you've always got to use a paintbrush. But let's face it, on doors like this, it's a lot quicker to use a roller and actually, I don't know about you, but I prefer the finish that you get with something like a simulated molar, molar? Simulated mohair roller than you do with a paintbrush. The other thing I like about the shellac is it's so quick drying. I've literally only just finished painting this. I'm going to handle it already. <laughs> just working with this stuff today, I'm a massive convert. When I did my comparison video with the Zinza against the Johnstons, I sort of saw the, the thin consistency of the Zinza as a bit of a, a bit of a sort of negative point. Actually, it's what makes this stuff so good. Because particularly as a primer, it's just so easy to paint on. And the other thing about it is it dries ridiculously quickly. We're talking at normal temperatures, touch dry in 15 minutes and recoatable in 45 minutes. Your typical water-based primer is recoatable after about two hours. So 45 minutes. That's just making your prep time if you're doing a lot of painting so much quicker. So go out and get yourselves some of this, my fellow DIYers, because I don't think you're going to be disappointed. I'm just applying a second coat of primer now, and I have to say, I'm really impressed with this. I mean, it looks almost as good as a top coat. And for a paint that's so thin, but goes so far, Pretty happy. I gave this a bit of a hard press when I did my Zinza BIM against um, John Stone's comparison, primarily because when I was concluding which one was better, they both performed pretty similarly, and I just singled out the Zinza as being twice as expensive. But then somebody pointed out that actually it goes twice as far which I sort of only appreciated after I posted the video. And yeah, I think this is a top quality paint. I bought these press and seal freezer bags because I wanted to um, keep the roller head fresh. And I looked at them and thought, these are tiny. What am I going to do with these? Actually, think what the plan is. I'm going to put the simulator mohair sleeve in there just while just to stop the sleeve drying out. I waited for the first coat to dry till it works. And 12 hours later. I can feel inside the bag that the roller is still usable. You can see what it's doing to my fingers. So that's great news. I've got to say I don't enjoy painting but I do enjoy seeing the fruits of my labours and it's morning two of this painting. I wasn't doing this all day yesterday, I was just filling it in around my other jobs and it's nice to see how this paint has bedded in. These doors have had two coats of the Zinza BIN and 
they are now beautifully smooth. It's almost like they've had a satin top coat. And if I just zoom in on the end grain, the all important end grain that we all get so agitated about when we're painting MDF. I did really lather this on yesterday, but this is the best result I think I've ever had from painting, considering it's a single coat from painting um, MDF end grain, because normally when you paint MDF end grain with um, a wood primer, it goes very orange as the end grain comes back through the wood but it's hardly you can hardly see the end grain at all now and using a bit of 180 grade sandpaper I can get that beautifully smooth in a matter of seconds If I wasn't doing a video on this today, I'd probably not even bother doing a second coat on the end grain. I'd probably go straight on to the water-based satin top coat that I've bought. But because I am doing a video on this and I'm really interested to see the maximum potential of the Zinza BIN, I'm going to do one more coat. For the end grains on oh, my second coat, I'm literally just rollering one pass with a roller all the way along. One of the reasons I love this is it has a 45 minute recoat time. It's 25 past 11 in the morning and already today I've put two coats on the back of um, each of these doors. And so we're ready for the top coat for which I'm using this Johnston's water-based satin which I've had mixed to a Farron Ball colour, Studio Green. A lot of you aren't going to like this, it's quite dark. Check this out. We all know it's a pain washing rollers and when you're mid job between the first and second coat I just can't be bothered to wash the roller overnight. I do wash the paint brushes but this is two food bags with masking tape. I, did, I used to use duct tape but the problem is the duct tape, the gaffer tape, rips the bag to pieces whereas this way masking tape peels off. I've actually reused this masking tape. Um, Two bags look, one there, one here. You can see I've reused this bag before. And now my paint is beautifully wet still. That's been there for two days. That's all ready for the next coat. 180 sandpaper, quick sand of those end grains, which I've done a couple of times now, just to make sure. The end grains are pretty well sealed now, but it's just, you know, a little bit of extra to make them as smooth as possible. 
and then just going over that very little paint on the roller So that's it everyone, that's how I painted my panel doors and that's why I love the Zinza BIN so much. From now on it's going to be my go-to primer for pretty much everything really. Over the next couple of weeks I'll be doing a couple more videos on these cupboard doors. The next one will be to show you how I installed these flush hinges. And in the final video in the series I'll be showing you a really good way to create very smart shelves with routed front edges. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video, if you have please click on the like button below. And if you're new to my channel I'd love to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here.